the places where this life takes one. Here we are in a patch of sand in the middle of the ocean and I tell you what it's not much bigger than a cat's litter box but infinitely cleaner. We're here to fish, dive, sightsee and take in the marvels of the natural world. This place is called Cunningham's Island and it's part of a Roly Shoals, a series of donuts in the Indian Ocean a couple of hundred kilometres out from Broome. The existence of a Roly Shoals was first recorded in the very early 1800s by whalers from the Northern Hemisphere. But it wasn't until 1881 while surveying the Australian coastline that Captain Philip Parker King named the Shoals collectively after Josias Rowley, the master of an American whaling vessel who first sighted them in 1800. King named the southernmost reef after Rowley's ship Imperius. The middle reef was called Clerk after the captain of another whaling ship who made the sighting sometime after Rowley and the northernmost reef Mermaid after King's ship. Our journey began in the iron ore port of Dampier. Unlike King, at the mercy of wind and tide, our trip was made in speed and comfort. Safari 2, Neil Patrick's grand 45 footer built from Western Australian Jarra, was to be home for the next week. A very livable home. Besides Neil Patrick, my fishing mates for the trip were Ben Patrick, a great angler and these days managing director of Halco Tackle, and Don McPherson, a world authority in the manufacture of fishing lines. Don is recovering from throat surgery and these days spends as much time on the water as possible. The concept for our adventure materialised when Mustard, Platypus and Halco Major manufacturers in those fields decided to produce a TV video program that showcased their product against strong fish and in a beautiful Indian Ocean backdrop. Fishermen are eternal optimists and their anticipation always accompanies their departure on a long range trip. And what a good sign it is for the boat to have barely cleared land and to be risking collision with a hot tuna school. Well at last, after a lot of miles, we're finally fishing. Uh, we come across a herd of hot to trot mac tuna on the way out to an island where we're going to shelter for the evening before going to the Rollies. Anyway, I tell you what, they were almost that thick, all you had to do was hit the water. And uh, I fluke one to sort of grease up a few muscles, bend a fly rod and sort of get started. It's going to be a good trip. I tell you what, we got gang banged by a herd of marlin then. Uh, we had a double. Uh, ben, uh, Ben's fished through the hook and I'm still in business. So uh, that sort of really bodes well for a trip to, to put a couple of lures out and wham bang, you've got two billfish on. Best jump in.
believe it or not, uh, it's a billfish on a laser. I know these things, lasers will catch uh, everything with fins, everything in the ocean for sure, and a lot of good freshwater fish too, but uh, this is a bit of a surprise. And uh, we've hooked him up, settled him down, and uh, for the next 15 minutes it's just a bit of a stalemate, and um, <clears throat> hopefully uh, I'll get a line back soon, and uh, we can go to work on him. Thank you, Spirit. Come on, Hero. Bring him up. I tell you what, uh, minnow type lures aren't the best things to go chasing billfish with. Uh, for a start, there's a lot of billies that flat refuse to have anything to do with a plastic counterfeit fish. And then there's deficiencies in the hooking department, uh, chewing gum rings and hooks, and uh, hooks that fail to pen penetrate, and of course, just the element of bad luck. If anything can sort of go wrong, Murphy's Law, if the fish can throw a lure, well certainly it's a billfish. Actually, we stuck this heavy duty mustard treble right in the bill and uh, we're able to get him in, but a great fish and uh, great to see him go back. We'd barely resumed trolling when Don's rod went off, 100 yards at the back of the boat, a black marlin of around 150 pounds, a very feisty fish, you punched through the surface and put on a good aerobatic display. But pressure and steady rod work from Don over a period of 20 minutes so gradually wore him down and got him to the back of the boat where we were able to have a tag shot. This gave the fish a bit more renewed vigour and uh, he was able to dislodge the lure without having to be brought into the boat for a formal release. Fishermen want a lot of different qualities in fish line. The first one, of course, is our platypus pretest, which we've had out for 25 years. We first started making that for the uh, Australian sport and game fishermen who wanted a pretested line. So we actually test that every thousand metres. So it gives the fisherman plenty of confidence that, that he's getting a line that's going to meet the IGFA specifications. That line's got a fair amount of stretch in it but uh, it helps the fishermen to catch more fish. We then have a platinum. Platinum is not a game line, although it does meet IGFA specifications. It's a very thin line, very flexible, and more for the, for the uh, not even the average angler, but for the, for the good fishermen. Then we've got a new line out now that's just been released, Super 100. Platypus is actually 100 years old this year. So we've brought out a commemorative line that we call Super 100 which is the thinnest, strongest monofilament on the line at the moment in the world. That's going to be a winner for us. It's only been out a few months and uh, we're already setting records. Then we, we, then we brought out the uh, Platypus Pink. Pink's got a super, super low stretch quality, about 15 to 18% elongation. And that gives them a, a much more direct contact with the fish, a lot easier to set the hook. We made that a pink colour. Um, Again, probably just a bit different, not necessarily that it was a, a colour that made much difference, but just to uh, have the variation. Um, Pre-test is a fluoro yellow and also on a clear, and as I say, pink is just a pink colour. So there's four different qualities of line we have, and each one is a different colour, and also uh, a big variation in its qualities. Solid red dots that shows good thickness of fish and deep uh, solid flesh and the good leading fish come up as red dots on the, on the, on the sounder. The 
yellows and blues are generally small and not uh, as uh, good eating or satisfactory catch. So we're looking at a lot of, lot of little yellow fish down there, but we need some good solid red dots there, uh, and I'm sure they can catch some decent fish. It's on the surface. Love Bill. Love a belt, bro. Love a belt. Love a belt. There you go. Belt. What is it there, mate? Wahoo, I think. Oh, yeah, Big okay. Wahoo. stands out Don. Yeah, makes it a lot easier to see Rod. Right? Yeah, look at that, it's like the water. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. chaos uh, in paradise I might add. We had a double hook up and uh, a free swimmer wahoo uh, uh, came swimming up following one so I immediately dropped the rod uh, and, and uh, grabbed the fly rod but to no avail and we're just finishing it off now and Neil's got a yellowfin tuna here which we'll gaff and get a uh, belly flap out of. Had him or? No, we, no, we're fully even. 
Okay. Yeah. Right around the pick. Okay, uh, with this fellow we're going to convert part of him. We'll sashimi a bit, uh, makes beautiful tucker and also remove the uh, belly flap for a, uh, a teaser for a fly rod shot at a billfish. Okay, Halco was established uh, in 1950 by a guy called Hal Cooper in Perth in Western Australia and ever since that time Halco has been in a period of growth. When uh, Neil Patrick, my father, bought the company in 1980, uh, it was growth continued and accelerated. Since that time we've moved into a range of plastic lures uh, deviating from just the old metal range. The metal lures we produce are now some of the finest in the world with finishes that are just unbeatable. We have excellent hardware on all our tackle. We use our unique Halco fish rings which are an extra strong split ring on all tackle. We use must add hooks on everything uh, on all our lures and all our rigs. Halco's come a long way since the first plastic lures were manufactured. We've recently upgraded the whole lane to Laser Pro range to make them some of the best blue water lures in the world. And uh, the smaller ones are excellent estuary and uh, rivers and lake lures. In 1995, Halco acquired RMG, which was a lure making company that specialised in barramundi lures and freshwater and empowerment type lures. Since that time, we've significantly upgraded the range improve the quality to bring it up to the standard that Halco strives to achieve. To have someone in the calibre of Rod Harrison on board at a remote location like this at the Rowley Shoals is fantastic and the benefits are numerous. In our process of continually assessing and testing our lures, his input and guidance has been invaluable. With field trips such as this, we know that you can rely on the quality and durability of Halco lures. Well, I wouldn't call myself a master baiter by any definition, but there are a couple of little tricks that will help you catch more fish when you go fishing with bait on the bottom, for snapper, sweet lip, whatever else that takes baits on the bottom. And firstly, your choice of hook. Uh, I have a great uh, confidence in hooks, but have no set in them. That is a straight hook. And the reason for that is when you put, the, put them down with a bait on them, you don't get any twist. Conversely, cut your baits in long thin strips and hook them through just for once. That's all you've got to do. Now a couple of hook patterns here that uh, are firm favourites of mine. The Needlepoint Red Tarpon by Mustard and also the Demon uh, hook which is a semi tuna circle style. Now what you've got to remember with hooks uh, these days, they're, they're smaller, lighter, sharper and you can catch enormous fish on quite small hooks. And bait fishing, the name of the game is presentation. Have the thing looking lifelike. There seems to be some compulsion amongst anglers to hide the hook, completely bury it. Not so. Just sort of send it down in a strip like that. And as an alternate to a sinker, I put this uh, Halco jig on. No hooks on it, but it, it flashes and that's a good attractant. And run a, a trace off there. Now as for the main line, uh, uh, well, my preference always has been bionic braid. Uh, it's thinner for a given strength. You have better bite detection and you can get down there with a lot less weight on the line. So a combination of all those things should mean more fish in the boat for you. This uh, little hummer's a lunar tail coral cod. See the uh, very uh, well defined crescent type uh, tail there and uh, something to do with moon phases I guess so they call this fellow the lunar tail or a pod. Again bait unscathed, nice natural presentation. I think I can do it again from there. something or maybe just something a little bit more palatable yeah should have color in a moment here he is Thank you. 
sweet Maybe. lavender, but I'm not quite sure. It's not the markings are most unusual. Aren't unusual. They? I've never seen one like this. And all the you know, I've caught quite a pulse of these over the years. It doesn't look like a long photo. I'm stuffed if I know. No, the long photo. So that's the long nose. Yeah, yeah. It could be the sweet lip, the, the sweet lip emperor. Yeah, bloody snow anyway. It's unusual, the snout's different. I, I, I've got no idea. It's not being this late as you do book. I tell you what, this one's uh, got me flummoxed. Uh, uh, physically, it's got all the dimensions of a long nosed emperor, the long thin snout, but the coloration, which is uh, nothing to sort of uh, go holus bolus on when you're identifying fish, but the coloration is all wrong. Uh, he's a, definitely an emperor of some sort, but uh, as to precisely what, I don't know. Uh, there are a number of different types of emperors. Now, uh, interestingly enough, I've caught this fella on the, this new mustard demon hook. It's kind of a tuna circle uh, uh, format with the curved in point there. And uh, once the fish gets them there, gets one of those down, it, it, it's there for life. Well, until it rusts out or, or, or an angler removes it, but a uh, very secure hook for uh, bottom fishing. Certainly one of my favourites. relatively unfished waters like the Rowley Shoals, it is not unusual to encounter a large variety of fish species, and of those fish encountered, to find some in large schools. This applies for both pelagic fish and the demersal species. Around the drop-off where the atolls uh, plummet down to the ocean depths, uh, wahoo and tuna are found in big numbers. And in on the ledges you get uh, emperors, particularly the long-nosed emperor, in uh, school and uh, perhaps even plague proportions. So there's a, a good togetherness amongst the fish there, both the surface fish and those that live on the bottom. Well, Don, I'm afraid you can't eat this fella, mate. This is the uh, <coughs> red bass. Nasty, nasty. Okay, but a good fight. Let's go. This is a satellite photograph of uh, Clark Clerk Reef, that's Bedwell Island here, and this is the passage we have to come in. It's through here, which is very narrow, which you've seen. Uh, you can't come in too late in the afternoon because of the sun and uh, the water when it spills out of this whole lagoon, the tide being five metres, the water is contained in here after the, the reef is exposed and it's all rushing over the top of the reef and particularly through this boat passage here and these smaller boat passages there. Uh, so you get whirlpools and overfalls and quite a large waves uh, in this area when uh, the water rushes out. That can be quite uh, 
dangerous if you're not careful and watch what you're doing. You can't see the channel because the uh, sun's there, so we judge it from the movement of the sea and the waves. We know the channel's in here, and we can see what we appears to be the side of the channel with a ripple down the side, so we stay to the middle of that. Take a lot of horsepower to get through here. down the edge there you can see a different sort of colour on the water, not colour but so much of the ripple. And that's the edge of the channel. The waves at the moment are trying to push me a little bit towards it. Reefs for the Rolly Shoals now stand began forming over 10 million years ago when the continental shelf off northwestern Australia began to tilt downwards. Corals growing at the edge of a shelf, perhaps on outcrops thrust up by the geological faults in the seabed, continued to grow and kept pace with the subsidence. The advent of faster and more comfortable craft have made visits to the Rowley Shoals by sport fishermen, scuba divers, naturalists and shell collectors a much more common occurrence these days. While the wind is free, there is something very finite about the fuel load the modern game fishing cruiser can carry. This has led to a spirit of very close cooperation between the charter fleet and private craft that enjoy the Rowley Shoals resource. It is not unusual for craft with large capacities to carry fuel for the smaller boats. The Rolly Shells lay within Australia's 200 mile economic sea zone and are also relatively close to Indonesia. For that reason and to ensure Australian vessels are also doing the right thing, coastal patrol flights are a regular occurrence. That was great. Tell you what, Great Barrier Reef or any other damn coral reef in the world, this place loses out to none of them, both in terms of the quality and diversity of the fishing and the sheer beauty underneath. Well worth a trip. Casting lures over coral bommies and along the edges is a very exciting form of blue water light tackle sport fishing, especially where those edges are vertical and contain lots of overhangs and deep shadows. 
Those particular formations are tenement houses to a heap of fish including red bass and coral trout. On this particular trip we caught a few coral trout but no real snorters and that sort of left us with the impression that uh, this fishery had been harvested uh, and probably a little bit heavily. So those that we caught, even though coral fish is a great uh, table fish, uh, we put back, let them grow up. Time to time there have been hearsay sightings of bonefish that have come from the Roly Shoals. Boy oh boy, bones are one of my favourites, a blisteringly fast resident of the sand flats, called the Grey Ghost. I didn't need an excuse to check them out, and uh, after a long boat trip, to stretch the legs too. Well I don't know what the hell's going on here, I, I saw a tailing fish, uh, it was extreme rage, I had to cast my whole fly line plus a little bit of backing to make the distance, but I uh, done it from a, an upwind uh, position. The cast climbed like a homesick angel and, and dropped the fly right on the, on the fish. Anyway, it's uh, gone for the horizon, made a sonic boom, and I'm peeled for about 200 yards of uh, backing here. And fortunately, we've stopped the uh, animal, whatever it is, just before it made the outer reef. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I hope and pray it's a bonefish, but I, the fight uh, just sort of seems that it's, it's too dogged, it's still too strong. I suspect uh, one of the Trevally uh, species that are found around here, but uh, my God, talk about a sonic boom, but here we are, we've got the fly line coming back. There he is out there. Well, I'll be damned. This is the uh, bluefin Trevally. A fish they call uh, Caranx melon pignus and a first cousin to the uh, uh, GT. Beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. Typically with a rising tide, there were other trevallies moving onto this vast flat. Ben scores of the minnow lure, a neat little fish, and not long afterwards, Neil is in business with another beautifully marked bluefin. What an aptly named fish. <laughs> ben decides to get a bit more distance. He can see fish further out than what he can achieve uh, distance wise with a plastic lure and puts on a twisty and uh, that soars out and first cast bang. He's in with another trevally this time the ordinary common old GT. Oh, there's a tropical bird, look. 
this little bird here, it's a tropic bird, and uh, it's living this man-made structure on, on the island here, and it's laying its eggs. There's a few of them all over the island, and uh, they come here just to breed at, at certain times of the year. There's even one further down the hill with a, uh, with a little chick. That you can tell it's a tropic bird because it's red tail, and as they get older, they've got a slight pink colour to their, to their plumage. Well done. <laughs> great day today you know we've got some good fish what about that cast of harrows that was really good that right under the front of that blue tra valley bloody good fish Excellent. bloody yeah fluke fluke beautiful colors but far away you can't do flukes one after another harrow oh. <laughs> big fluke big fluke the uh, the other thing I'm really pleased about is the way all the lures are working well they're holding together yes. and the lines and hooks uh, no breakdown of gear at all. No breakdown of gear at all. There's not many harder testing grounds than this. Kid and loose can't pull. Man, I'm locked up and loaded. Come on. Not very big, but here we are. Well. A red bass. <clears throat> there we go. Hit the night walker dead center. And I reckon he thought he was a little turtle. Well, there you go. The red bass are a notorious taker of surface lures and a very nocturnal animal. And we got this one on the night walker. The night walker was devised more as a lure for Murray Cod and bass back in the eastern states. But uh, me thinks it looks a little bit like a turtle and, and these red bass, red choppers are a major predators of little baby turtles as they take to sea and being night time and in red bass country well thought we'd better give it a go and uh, prove the point. No, Perth Radio on 12 megs, uh, Safari 2, Victor Mike 5094. Do you receive? Safari 2, Safari 2, good morning. You're coming through loud and clear. Go ahead over. Oh, th thanks very much, Perth. Uh, we're at uh, Clerk Reef at the Rolly Shoals. We'll be uh, here till tomorrow evening when we'll go to Broome. It's just keeping in touch with you. Uh, you've got a constant watch on your red phone 1226, haven't you? Correct, over. It's open 24 hours, over. We had a lot of trouble getting through yesterday. Uh, uh, I just might have had the weather conditions. I think it's been pretty bad for radio up here. Uh, so I'll try again later. You only had uh, for the best of time at the moment, over. Thank you very much. Safari clear and thank you for your help. I started fishing with my brother when we were both children of tender years. And we really did use bent pins. And the first real fish hooks that we could save up and buy were made by mustard. That was nearly 50 years ago and since then I've pretty much used the brand exclusively. And more recently I've helped with the research, development, trialling of some brilliant new patterns down in this hemisphere. The mustard triple grip treble for one which I believe is the greatest innovation in hook hardware for lures in recent times. We've got some great new bait patterns along for this trip too. The Mustard Demon and one of my favourites, the Needle Point Tarpon Hook for bait fishing. And closer to home there's the Mustard Fanaki range which is great for plastic uh, worms and, and fishes and so on for bass, yellow belly and impoundments and barramundi too. And also 
the saltwater fly range, the flies that I'm using on this trip were tied on mustard hooks. Great company, really happy to be involved with them. job fish and they don't get much better than that. It's got to be uh, pretty close to six kilos and took the chrome pink and what happened Ben had a barracuda on. Don was uh, doing his bit retrieving the lures and wham bam thank you ma'am here we are. Yeah great fish. Thank you Rodney. I all of a sudden started to win this fight and I was sort of trying to work out why. as we may, there was just no way we could keep the Wahoo wolf packs away from our lures. Not that there's anything wrong with that, for an exhilarating fish to catch, one of the fastest in the sea. And not that Don, myself or Ben really minded, but the problem is when Wahoo are on the scene in plague proportions, the other fish, billfish, tuna and whatever else is likely to take a lure, are simply outcompeted. But there's nothing really wrong with too much of one fish. It's a whole heap better than a lot of no fish. Oh, by gee, those triple grips hang in there. My oh God, keep your, keep your feet clear, people. One fish won't be long. One more. That's it. Okay. <laughs> You know, out here in these waters where there's billfish, wahoo and tuna, it's a battle zone for lures and they do get damaged, uh, not only by the fish, but uh, with our removal process, keeping our catch and release ethic alive, we occasionally distort the hooks, pulling them out of the fish. Uh, these are the mustard uh, triple grips, great hook, uh, once they get in they really hang on. But if you've got to have a weak link in a lure, and, and all lures occasionally have some somewhere to give, uh, make sure it's in the hook and not in the uh, split ring. And I must compliment Halco, these uh, split rings are absolutely bulletproof. We do bend the hook, but never seen one of these uh, rings spring yet, so that's a pretty good sign.
done, Don. Good fish. Hooray! Good luck, good luck. Donnie, you making any progress there, mate? Mate, I think it was a case of the, the mouse taking the cheese and something's grabbed the mouse. Maybe the pussy. The tortured sound's been made by Don's rod and reel. Say it all. Something really big, unboatable, has got involved. Something's got to give, and eventually it's Don's line. Don's an old mate of mine of 30 years standing, one of nature's gentlemen and, like all true fishermen, accepts these losses as part and parcel of the game. like a bad mother-in-law and uh, we've got no place on this boat so we're going to whip the hooks out and uh, put it right back. sure what this fish is but we figure it might be a yellowfin tuna in which case we're going to gaff it we need some belly flaps for teasing billfish later in the day so uh, some fish we we let go the majority in, in actual fact but uh, occasionally we have to catch fish and and, and and put them in the boat to to utilize them for other techniques I tell you what, there's nothing like taking advantage of a situation. Ben was just free spooling his lure out to get started and wham bang, he got hit and uh, I was already out past him so I flat strap retrieved back and we picked up a double. So we got two uh, nice belly flaps so we can go bill fishing now. Get 
you know, this fly fishing for billfish can be uh, hours of tedium, just sort of working the water, uh, uh, exercising your sense of patience, and, and seconds or maybe even a minute of sheer pandemonium when a, when a fish comes up. But uh, to, to help get the fish up, we use uh, what's known as teasers or daisy chains, and uh, they comprise of all sorts of paraphernalia. Uh, one of my favourite combos is to sort of sweeten it at the back there with a belly flap, and then I, uh, the next link in the chain is a Helco Giant Trembler. It combines heaps of flash and a lot of noise. Okay, then we come up to a daisy chain of squids, which are very, very lifelike. <coughs> and at the top of the uh, daisy chain is what's known as a bird. It splashes along the water. And this is tied onto a rope so that we can pull it in fast when a fish uh, comes up. Now, the rationale behind it all is that... Uh, this attracts, with all the flash scent, noise and splash, attracts fish and they come in on one of our smaller, more natural baits which we rig up to swim but it hasn't got any hook in the uh, bait. So we transfer them off this one to the smaller teaser and by that time hopefully they're hot to trot enough to eat the fly. Whatever the situation, dangling a line from a jetty or waiting for a billfish to attack a teaser, fishing is a game that requires patience. For many the wait is the peace in being alone with one's thoughts, for others, well, the calm before the storm. Yes, When you're fly fishing for billfish, your conversion rate is uh, often well short of 100%. The variables are enormous, including getting a solid hook up. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult, it's in the lap of the gods as to which uh, way the fish uh, takes the fly. And in this case, uh, well, the fishing gods were on the side of a sailfish and uh, didn't bit it properly, got a bit of slack line and uh, paid the price. But uh, more out there, I hope. It wasn't to be. The fish you need the most are often the hardest to catch, and we just ran out of time in our attempts, and it was time to plan the return trip back to Broome. We're just plotting our course uh, into Broome from uh, Clerk Reef. We've plotted in here. We have to be careful quite a long way, and there was nothing in between us. It's 165 nautical miles, which is on a rough scale, if you could double that for kilometres uh, at 110 degrees. We'll go in pretty slowly uh, to conserve fuel, but it should take us about uh, 12 hours. So we'll leave this evening uh, and get there in the morning so we can refuel in daylight. Uh, the shoals themselves are just magical areas. They're very, they can be quite dangerous unless you're very careful. So there's a lot of planning and forethought and careful navigation. If you get into trouble out here, there's a long way from help and quite often you're out here by yourself and uh, so that you that's this extra bit of caution that you put into the whole exercise you know memories are a big part of any successful fishing trip and there's no better place to enjoy a rolly shells afterglow than here at the cable beach resort in Broome. i'm going to chill out here for a few days do a bit of maintenance on the gear get the salt off, have a few cold beers, generally chill out. Plan the next trip too. I'll see you on the water, eh?
welcome to the stressful world of lure testing. We're here in the world-renowned Halco test facility off Fremantle and it looks like another tough day in the office. You know, the world of lures has changed a lot over the years. These days it's all high tech, colour, pattern, action, retrieve speed, very important stuff. And we've got Ben Patrick who makes these lures, going to tell us all about it. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in the water and on the water, um, both fishing and under the water, looking at what bait fish do and what predators do when they are attacking bait fish. And that uh, helps our lures have the edge on certain occasions, or most occasions. If we're looking for a lure to crash dive, we'll actually be looking at its rate of descent over a given distance and uh, compare it against other crash diving lures that we have in our range of different sizes. So it's a, uh, very much a comparison thing. Yeah, there's much theory about colours and we try and prove up the theories ourselves rather than just rely on hearsay. And um, some of the underwater footage you'll see, it's incredible how, how bold the reds are of the, the, the gills of the lures and uh, it's one of the reasons we find them we think it's so important. If you see bait fish underwater when they get frightened and turn away, their gills flare as they put more water through them and uh, you can always see a big bright red of, uh, flash of red and that's what we try and do with our lures, imitate a, a frightened bait fish. We listen to um, all anglers, but particularly a, a group of key anglers that we work closely with and uh, we listen to what they say and we try and make changes accordingly to make lures to what, what the anglers around Australia and around the world for that matter want. look at here is the baby of the range. The little Scorpion 35, we like to call it the Sneaky. In fact overseas they call it the Sorcerer Sneaky. Fantastic little lure. And what it does that's unique is when you stop winding in mid-water it'll actually rise up very very slowly. Very important for hanging around the areas where fish are. If they're down a metre or so you can have it right there and keep it in the strike zone for longer little twitchy retrieve in close to cover and Bob's your uncle. The smallest of the laser pros, the little 45. Fantastic little lure, especially for shallow water ambush species that live near the bottom. I'll show you why it's so good. This little lure is a slow sinker and when you retrieve it, it comes back very much at the same depth. So what you can do is let it sink to just above the bottom, above the weeds, above the little snaggy bits that are going to spoil your fishing, and you can bring it back close to the predators. I'll show you how it works. Slow sinking. Okay. You can even use this lure to drop down right alongside jetty piles. A lot of fish like to hang around the piles and feed off the, the weed and little crustaceans. You've got the lure right there in their territory. Let it sink right down alongside and then start to work it away. The same thing applies in fresh water uh, and the lure will sink just a little bit quicker in fresh water as opposed to salt and really good for working drop-offs along timber where you could actually run the lure right close to timber and then retrieve it maybe along, along the length of a fallen log that sort of situation makes it a very effective freshwater lure. Talk about versatile Little twisty lure. This, these are the most versatile lures of the lot. Uh, available in sizes from one and a half gram to seventy gram, and you can do anything with these things. They, from the moment you, they hit the water after you cast them, they start fluttering down. They get they get taken by a lot of predators on the drop. You can fish them from them any depth because they sink quickly, obviously. And one, one of the best ways to work them is to bring them back fast, rod tip high, so it's splashing across the top. Just looks like a little bait fish trying to flee a predator. And uh, a lot of the quicker predators, things like tuna, just can't resist them. This one's in 24 karat gold plate, also available in chrome, and uh, both finishes work great. The rattle of the tremblers, fantastic lures, really versatile make a lot of noise as you can hear, quite weighty so you can cast them a long way and gee there's a lot of ways you can use these. Now they come in a range of sizes, you can, you can just cast them out and retrieve them fast and they'll come back in with a very fast vibrating action. You can let them sink down deep and then you can rip into them with the rods and you'll get that really strong rattling noise as you rip it up through the water. Really turns on fish, they're quite exciting things to use. Fantastic in fast water when you want to get down there a bit, you know in the current and 
fish can pick up on this very quickly in that tumultuous environment. I'll show you how we use them. Let it sink down and start to work it back up. And underwater there it'll be making quite a lot of noise. Hopefully attracting a nasty predator. Of course you can always just cast it and then just retrieve it and it comes in with a really nice fast vibration. Pretty good for uh, some of the smaller tuners. to the big little lures. The Scorpion 68. Once again the running depth's on the bib. Goes down to two and a half metres and it's got that characteristic butter knife tail that gives the lure a tight shimmy and exposes that rear hook for a better hook up rate. Have a go at this little one. And that gill, have a look at that, have a look at that gill again, that's, that's fantastic because you can really see that red and uh, that, that's got to attract predators. Cute little critter, little Mickey Mouse ears. Actually it's luminous, shine a light on these and use them at night and they glow. Fun to use, it's called the Night Walker. And it's designed for fishing in calm water at night. You throw it out, retrieve it slowly and it's got a real scuttle across the top. It imitates uh, like a little mouse or water rat swimming across the top of the water. And, and there's, there's quite a lot of big predators all over the world that love coming up and eating that sort of thing. It's got some salt water applications too but generally the water needs to be calm. It's a real sort of surface scuttling lure and great fun to use because you can imagine on a calm still night one of these things scuttling quietly across the top and a big whoop from below. Great fun to fish with. Well in the mid-sized lures there's not much better than the Scorpion 125. This is the 4 meter plus model. Like, like all the Halco range, fitted with fish rings, extra strong, mustard trebles. This is a fantastic lure, it was originally designed for barramundi. It's got heaps of other applications like spinning off high rocks, it holds the water beautifully and you can fish it in close. One of the fantastic things about this particular lure is its ability to back off a snag. I'll try and show you how we do this, but what happens is when the lure is swimming along, along and it bumps into a snag, if you drop the rod tip, give it a bit of slack, the lure will back out of the snag. Sounds unbelievable, but we're going to show you that it's true. Okay. So, I'm retrieving this in fairly snaggy country. I'm hoping to get snagged up. Yep, there we go. Just drop that rod tip, give it a bit of slack, give the lure time to work out. We should be free. Yep. of lures we call the crash divers. Exciting stuff. Poltergeist 80, little Tilson Bass. And both these are designed to really get down fast. As soon as you start to crank the rod, it's when it hits the water, down the lures go. So it's great. So you can cast up against a rock wall or right hard up against a snag, a drop off, and the lure will go straight down to where the action is. Crash divers. See how we go with these. Cast out hard up against the obstacle. Start to wind and give the rod a bit of a whoop. And that lure goes straight down on a crash dive. Down there where the fish are and you're into the action. Okay. 
cast out to the snag or the rock wall, turn the handle and start working and straight away that lure is going down really hard towards the bottom and you're going to get right down to where those fish that are hanging deep are just waiting for an easy feed. Same story with the Tilson bass. Throw it out to the snag, a couple of rips on the rod, get the handle winding and that lure is going to work its way crash diving straight down near the bottom of the snag and that's often where the really good fish are. really shouldn't show you this because, and I don't like showing it to the fish because it is so effective, it's unbelievable. This is the Crazy Deep. It's a Scorpion 150 with this remarkable bib on the front that Halco rate this as going down eight meters. I've actually snagged up in nine meters of water with this thing. And it, it's just incredible that such a small bib can get it down that far. It's particularly good in medium depth reefy country, say sort of 10 to 15 metre depths, where this lure is going to be trolled, when you're trolling it at four, four and a half knots, it's going to be down there right, right near the fish's homes, you know, for species like coral trout, that sort of thing. Uh, you just can't beat them. Fantastic, wonderful trolling lure that will catch fish in situations that no other lures will. Uh, don't leave home without it. There are people that reckon that this is the best big bib trolling lure in the world. I'm not going to argue with them. This is the Laser Pro 190 Deep Runner. Fantastic lure. Heavy duty hardware, takes a range of speeds right up to about 10 knots but trolls really well at six, six and a half knots. A little bit of a rattle, tuna love. It just does everything well and it'll take some of the worst punishment that the nastiest fish in the ocean can dish out and keep coming back for more. Really good general purpose trolling lure for big fish. Have a look at that contrast, that red head really stands out. Here she is, the big mama of the Halco lure range, the giant trembler. Big, bibulous minnow, indestructible, strong rattle. It's the bane of every big pelagic in the world. You can troll these things at a oh, great range of speeds, right up to about 15 knots. Uh, they're good, they don't catch a lot of weed when you're trolling through the water because they haven't got that bib. Uh, they just do everything right you know, when you want a really heavy duty lure. Tuna in particular just love these things. Uh, gee, you know, when you want a lure that's just not going to fold under pressure, this is the one. Okay, well, now we're going to look at a, a couple of lures that do the same thing, but at different depths. Before we do, just a, a moment on bibs. You can pretty much tell at a glance how deep a lure is going to swim by just having a look at its bib. On these little laser pros, little short bib, shallow runner. Slightly longer bib goes a bit deeper. And in fact, with the, with the laser pros, the, the depth they'll swim to is actually written on the bib. And then you get something like this Tilson Barra, big, shallow bib, deep runner. Now what we're gonna do is just compare what happens when you really work a lure hard. We'll do it with the Tilson Barra and one of the laser pro 120s. Okay, let's, let's start with this Tilson Barra. Big bib, it's gonna get down there quickly. And with this type of lure, the idea is you get it down there and you work it pretty hard. And this, it's going to repay you with a lot of action down deep. Really stirs up aggressive fish. And with the Laser Pro 120, same sort of vigorous action, but this time at a shallower depth.
Alco catch scent. What a great product. It masks all those nasty scents that put fish off biting, things like uh, sunscreen, petroleum products, cigarettes, whatever, and also contains attractant pheromones which will actually bring fish to your bait or to your lure. And those of you that must use bait, if you put this on while you're out in deep blue water, you know, mutton birds can be such a pain, they'll steal your bait sometimes to the point where you just can't keep bait in the water long enough to catch a fish. Squirt some of this on there, brilliant green dye it contains, puts the mutton birds off long enough for your bait to get out of their range, then you start catching fish. But we're going to put it on a lure today. We're continually testing, assessing and improving our lures, whether it be colours or adjusting bibs or making new bibs, so it's, uh, it's essential we keep up with current trends and also uh, keep improving our lures. The Kimberley region of Western Australia is renowned worldwide for its rugged natural beauty and offers those who seek adventure the opportunity to explore a virtually untouched landscape. The area is at its best following the wet season, which is late March, early April. This is when the small creeks on the fertile plateau, brimming with floodwaters, merge together, forming fast flowing rivers cascading into spectacular waterfalls. It's a time of the year when the area offers an abundance of fish life, making it one of the best fishing areas in the world and a great location for the sports fisherman to test his skills. And there's no better way to get close to the action than aboard the Kimberley Quest while still enjoying the comforts of home. One very keen sports fisherman is well-known photojournalist and fishing expert Cole Roberts, who took this time of the year as an opportunity to put Helco lures and platypus lines to the challenge against the fighting prowess of some of the many fish species that populate the rivers of the Kimberley. I've got troubles. Oops. You have to go in after him, bloke. Do you want to go forward? Not a bad barrel either. Oh, he's going right through the tree. There he is out here. Right there. Oh my goodness. How on earth get that out. am I going to get that out? These problems were meant to try us. All we can do is go in after him, hope for the best. We had a couple out yesterday doing the same, but this one's gone in, done a left-hand corner, <laughs> and way out there in the open. Poor old 30-pound braid lines and a copper hammering. Well, bloke, I think we just have to keep going in there. Oh, I can feel it rasping there. Oh, there he goes again. Oh, look at him oh, out there! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I have to swap your spots, Kerry. Yeah. So. Oh, Ah. 
down through there. Hey mate, we might, we might be lucky. I might not be. Um, go back out around. I've got around this one. I've got around this one. It's, it's under that one there now. So if you can know, yeah, mate, just nose her in there. Yep. Now go forward again once we get past that stick. He's still on. That's it. Go slow up. Oh, he's running again. Just waiting there. Unbelievable. We can just get around this one. Take this gently now, so I don't spook him. Just keep going backwards. Keep going backwards, Glenn. There he is. There he is. Oh. Keep going backwards, mate. That's it. Keep going backwards. Oh, I'm feeling on more sticks. Oh, he's going back in. Keep going. Keep going. Let's keep going. Beautiful. I'm just locking up on this 30 pound braid. Here he comes out again. Right. Okay, bloke. Okay. Here we go. There's the bow wave. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> he should have had me done, good and proper. I guess it's a testament to this 30 pound platypus braid. Well, fella, you did a great effort. I'm going to reward you and let you go. What's he going to jump? Watch it, watch it. Ooh. I thought you were going to wear a triple wing, Glenn. <laughs> do, do you want the knife? One more to go. Well, that was pretty extraordinary stuff. First cast of the morning, into the snags, and a barrow stitched me up good and proper, right in amongst all the timber. We unravelled him amazingly enough. We got him. I bet I can't do that two times in a row. Oh, that come out of those snags, man. Come out. Beautiful. So you want a gold? Yeah. You don't need the creek. The gold, but what can do? And then yeah. got the net. Oh, we forgot the net, did we? <laughs> Nice fish. Right on there, Glenn. Oh, yeah. Oh. Where'd you get I was casting right there. One down here, Cole. Is it? Right here. Look at it. Swirly mouse. Oh, beautiful. Oh, got, got him. Oh, oh he spat it. Spat it. Oh, well done, yeah. Kerry. Here goes one look! Oh, 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 oh man! Oh, gee! Oh, he's got me in the sticks, I don't know where. I'm just hoping for the best. Uh, <laughs> get us out, Glenn, get us out, man! <laughs> oh, I can feel that line. It's braid. Oh, rasp man. Hang on, Glenn. Um, um, oh, there he goes again. Oh, I'm dragging him back. This will be amazing if we get it out of here. <laughs> I can feel it rasping on that line. Can you see the fish up in there or not? Here he is, he's coming out. Get us out now, get us out now. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go out. That's it, go, keep going. Get through, get through, come on fish. Get through there. Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, a nice fish. fish too, yeah. Oh, look at it. This is, this is Harrow's bionic braid made by a platypus. And did you see it rasping against all yeah. those trees? And I was able to drag it out. Absolutely amazing. What an endorsement for the line. Absolutely incredible. Oh. Absolutely incredible. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll be sticking with this braid line amongst these snags here. Just dangled the lure in the water. Round, bang, up he come. Amazing. Okay, Glenn. Look where he's, he's grabbed right on top there. You should be able to get him out pretty easy. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I 
Tom. Oh, that! Oh, that little fella. Oh, man. I was putting my thumbs on this bride and just pulled him out then. <laughs> Ricocheted him out of those mangroves. Well, this has got to be the smallest bear of the trip. <laughs> Yeah, bike. With those pliers. And... Oh, did you see the barrel come? Oh, 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 man! Oh, man! Oh, this is incredible stuff. <laughs> Kerry, I'll just cast in that gap there. Yeah. Five feet out from the boat, and bang, he just nailed it. Incredible. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Get out of those sticks. They must just all be just sitting down there in those snags. Uh oh, it's taking me under again. Thumb on. There he is. Well. Oh, here we go. Come on, I'm dragging him out. I'm dragging him out. I'm dragging him out. I'm dragging him out. Here he is. Oh, beautiful. Unbelievable. Just in, that, in those mangroves there. You lock up and hang on to this braid and it just drags him straight out. Oh, man. Oh, come out there. Here we go. Double thumb lock. Turn him. Pull him out. Uh, I was locked up here with double thumbs. And then I just. Uh, Gone. Just blew it. Oh. You know what happened there? He rasped through the leader. How's that? So it wasn't the line, it wasn't the braid. The leader rubbed on that mangrove tree. All rasped, wore through. All over, off. Oh well, I'm sure there's plenty more there. Yeah, oh, it's a nice one. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Cool, <laughs> hey, nearly, wild, sorry, Gary, nearly got on here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, he's a nice fish. Gee, the dinner gong has been sounded. Oh. I'll let him head first in, Glenn. Okay, let's bring him head first. I'll just spin him around head first now. Ready? That's it. <laughs> He's nice. He's nice. Yeah, very nice. Well done, mate. Well, Kerry, we knew they had to be in there. Yeah. And we just persevered until finally, bang, they started chewing. There's snags there. I mean, they're low lying. There's plenty of spots for the barrows to hide, lay up. Oh, beautiful. Nice one. Knew there had to be a barrel in there. <laughs> it was clear I was thinking for that happiness. Just kept it in front of me, but he took it. <laughs> Thank God I might have broken my walker. <laughs> Yeah, watch it for a second. Oh, and he's having another go. Stay on, stay on, yes. You beauty. <laughs> Phil's bug. <laughs> You're a little beauty. Jeez. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> You're a little beauty. Phil's bug worked again. Hot stuff, Gary. Hot stuff. Just waiting for them to swallow it so I can stick them. Yeah. Oh, here he comes. That's the one. Stuck him. Yes. 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 So I just sink the hooks instead of letting him hook himself. And it paid dividends. Well, so far anyway. <laughs> oh, nice. It all come together, Kerry, yeah, after many near misses, and this has been absolutely incredible fishing. Fizzers have had probably 20 strikes, 
I only caught about two or three, but uh, oh, the visual aspect of it, the old heart pounding, it's great, it's great. In fact, what we're doing is I'm using a Fizzeron service, and Kerry's using a Scorpion 125, covering both the top surface and down about three metres, both working well. Thanks, mate. All no right. Let's go do it again. There he is. Power. Actually, Kerry, I'll, I'll get a photo of that, mate. No language. Okay, Kerry. Do you jump for us, mate? That's it. Come on. Pull his head, pull his head, pull his head. Don't know. There's no one in the boat here. Pull his head, that's it. Pull, 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 yep. Hey boys, hey. <laughs> okay. You ready to go? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Wazza, can you grab a trembler out of my, um, a big trembler, the 110, out of the tackle box? Um, oh, oh, don't worry about it. it. <laughs> oh, he's got me in the sticks. Oh, there he is out there. Yeah. Oh, out of yeah. it. Uh, any suggestions, Kerry? I'll break that stick, I'll like. He's going around that one? He's going around that one, didn't he? Yeah, he's out there somewhere. Like, it, uh, there he goes, more, take a line. I don't even free spool, mate. Um, I've got no idea where he is. <laughs> well, we're going to attempt to get out of this macrame job here. Uh, I don't like our chances. Oh, there he is, jumping out the back. Yeah, mate. We take it easy. It's okay. Well, I'll be taking it easy with the crop then, won't we? Nice. Under the motor here. Here we go, oh, now where's the guy? Another stick down there. Big stick down there, Glenn. Oh, big stick down there. Big stick, uh, I think it's going to be all over Ralph. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Good one, Glenn. It's okay, he's not doing much, it's okay. Take, go, go, go for it. He's back in here around the front of your boat. Oh, is he? He's under the boat. Oh, don't go back in those snags. Here he's coming out the side. He's, I'm leading him out. Here we go. Swimming with us nicely. Swimming with us. Here he comes. Oh, beautiful. Kerry? Yeah? I'll get you to fight him when we get a shot, mate. Just put the finishing touches on. Beautiful. Well, as you can see, that was just incredible, that fish. Took me through the snags, did figure eights, did everything around the back of the boat. <laughs> Still performing. <laughs> we were lucky enough to unravel him. He went out in the middle. We got him. You win some, you lose some. At least we won this one today. That's a barra. Seen nose down? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, Glenn, just a little bit closer. See what it's like. Yeah, he's yeah. still there, same place. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah. Oh! Did you see that? Yeah. Here he is? There he is, right there. Oh, he missed it. Oh, no. Yeah. You got mine? You got yours? Yeah. You, oh, oh. Okay, he it again. he's still here. There he is, oh! Oh! Oh, you had a go at mine as well, unbelievable! He's a rotten shot, isn't he? It's all hell, oh, he's just having another go at mine! Oh, has he got glasses on this fish? Yeah, there he is, he's got it this time! Got it this time. Get us out of here, Glenn! That's it, he's coming through. Yeah, he's there, you got it. 
Oh, I spat it. <laughs> what exciting <laughs> fishing. Spotted a free swimmer, just nose down, tail up. Had about four or five goes of both our lures. Finally hooked up, but he escaped. Let's see if we can find him again. Here he is, he's here, you're on, you're on. Oh. No, you missed him. He had a go, though. There he is! Oh, look at that. Look, he's got it this time. Oh, there's another one in there. Kerry, there's one in there and there's one following mine. Oh, this is unbelievable. Any trouble is we're so in tight now. Oh! <laughs> we're just, just dealing. Oh, we another one. We're just dealing on our lures here. Oh, we're running out of room. What can I do? <laughs> oh. Glenn, um, <laughs> get us out of here. This is a classic example of a colour change. We have the fresh tannin coloured water coming down the stream, the incoming tides pushing all the dirty water up here. In theory, all the bait fish and hopefully the predators should be mixing in this dirty water. We'll test that theory out now. Oh, Barra! Oh, you beauty! Oh, oh. come out of there! Oh. Come on! You can clear those snags. Yes, you beauty. Yeah, Glenn. What? I don't think we need... Oh, yeah, okay, go on. Oh, not bad. Third cast of the morning. Beautiful start. Oh! oh Did you see the size of the barra? I don't know what we're going to do here, boys. No. It's a little one this time. Oh man. Oh, in the snags, come out, baby. <laughs> it's going off. Hey, he's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's huge, mate. Can I put him in the boat? <laughs> oh, don't worry about that, mate. You just about unhook him there. Unless you want to bring him in, do you? Really? <laughs> okay. Make him jump. Uh, this has been sensational. These snags have been here about half an hour. It's just barra after barra. Fantastic. Incoming tide, early morning light, obviously in a biting frenzy. Oh, that far. <laughs> oh, 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 Jeffrey, beautiful! Absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's a good size, too. Yeah, it's a ripper. It's a ripper. Look at them. Oh, 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 what? I actually saw that barret tail. Oh man. Oh, look at the size of it. Oh, watch out! <laughs> 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 Doing that again. Oh mate! <laughs> oh what a classic! Oh Jeffrey! Okay. Alright. You what? Know what? Can you get the other side, mate? Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, that's Dump. a good bike. Flash go? Yeah. Okay, try that again. Looks good. Another one. And turn it slower. Salmon, keep digging in, Jeff, it's be a race. Oh, flash, flash. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> oh, mongrel. Hey. <laughs> I can't let him. Oh, wow. I got him. 
you in? Just. Just. He's late. Oh. You still got him? I'm just. I've only just got him. Yeah. We can see him just side hooked. Oh. Come on. Oh. What are you doing? Scorpion. Green scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, come on, buddy. You're a bit worried, are you? Yeah. I think I've got another pin in now. Oh, you're right, you're right. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good old full row. Come on. It's a bit narrow too, it's a nice one. Yep. Here we go. It's coming up. It's not a bad fish. Is it? I can see it. I saw the back of him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, 15 pounder. Old poltergeist. Now the snags. I'll let you guys try. Thanks mate. Come on mate. <laughs> I'm just unlocked on this braid, mate, pulling him through. Absolutely beasting him. <laughs> the old poltergeist. Oh. Oh, look at that thumb, thumb lock on that braid. <laughs> oh, nice. What a beauty. Yeah, bloke. Well done. Oh, that took some doing. Beautiful, beautiful big barra, right off that rock out there, Kerry, where, where it's submerged. Ah, oh, beautiful. Looks 20 plus pound, Kerry. Oh, he's going for those rocks coming out. Oh, how close was that? Big chrome plated saltwater barra on the fluoro lure. Don't go down too deep with the net to hold him up near the surface. That'd be lovely. All right, mate, this time. Oh, beautiful. How's that for a barra? I tell you what, Kerry's uh, well over 20. Well over 20, probably closer to 30 pound, I reckon. That is a superb barra mundi. It's been a bit quiet this morning, but uh, that one fish has really made the session worthwhile. 150 scorpion, Elton John colour, did the trick. Okay, a bit of a smile there mate, a bit of a <laughs> smile. <laughs> this is the lure that caught that big barramundi. It's a 125 scorpion, or 5 inches in the old language, and it's called an Elton John because of its multi-coloured uh, look. It's only a one metre bib. These lures come into a variety of size bibs. Three metres, four, five, and they are interchangeable. They're polycarbonate, which means that they don't have any glue. They're locked in through this little unique patented system where you push that little square out and uh, you can change bibs. You can change it for a deep diver or for a shallow runner. Here behind me is where this barra came from. The beauty about this bib is that the tide's fairly low, it's only just been coming in, and the one metre model was the one that accounted for that barra. Obviously the barra could see the lure above it, came up, crunched it, and it was on. 
If it had been a deep diving model, it would have been digging in, the barrel wouldn't go down for it. So the shallow runner worked today. It's deceiving. Oh, don't tell me. No, it still annoys me. Ooh. Yeah, you can turn him off if you like, man. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is. It might be another Trevelli. Oh, no, it's a queenfish. Oh, queen. It's queenies, yeah. How's that? In this soup. <laughs> These are a great fish. They're clean fighters. I've got no worries at all about him doing me up on the rocks. Ultimate sport fish, these things take all sorts of lures, flies, baits, absolutely anything. Oh, he's hooked under there, that's why he's not jumping too much. Well done, beautiful. Yeah, good queen, eh? Hey, <laughs> nice, ready. You got some real sharp spines on them. You got to take care. Glenn's going to take a lot of care now as he unhooks him. <laughs> Hopefully, Glenn. The old queenies really hook themselves solid. They seem to get every single treble. In, uh, embedded in the fish. Oh, <laughs> incredible like that. There he goes. Beautiful. Gary, oh, you're on, he's on. Yeah, no, uh, what is it, bloody? Probably catfish or something. Uh, caddy, is it? No, it's a... Uh, That's a flathead. Flathead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's an unusual <laughs> sight. Pretty well, mate. Beautiful. Bartail flathead. How's that? You don't catch too many flathead up north. They're more common down south. But uh, well, certainly that size anyway. <laughs> That's a fairly unusual catch. That's a pretty decent size too. Yeah, good one, Kevin. <laughs> oh, we're on. Oh. oh, look at the salmon school with them. We've got crocodiles, we've got salmon. Oh, <laughs> Oh, we've got everything going here. Oh, and here comes the crocodile. Look at the crocodile coming in. He's getting excited. Come on, croc. <laughs> and we've got another crocodile over there. We've got two crocodiles. We've got two salmon. <laughs> oh, look at the gator. The old croc's getting excited. He's been watching us for hours. And now he's getting really turned on by this salmon. Oh, he's going down. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Oh, salmon, come up. <laughs> hey, Glenn, how do you feel like uh, netting him <laughs> before the crop gets him? I can see him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit further left. Where did you get? What's that? A little bit further left. Gotcha! <laughs> yeah, cheeky little fella. Well, Nice little mango jack on the three metre scorpion, 125. Might just unhook him and let him go. Are those pliers there, Glenn? Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah, cool. Oh, 
Nice wanted... finger mark, is it? The finger mark? Yeah, I think so. Oh, nice finger mark, mate. Beautiful. Oh, oh good, he's a beauty. Huh? He's a beauty. Oh, that's a big jack. Big jack. Big jack. Yeah, yeah, big jack. Good one. Oh, lovely. I'll hold him on board for you, mate. Oh. Beautiful. Laser, laser Pro. Laser Pro. How's that? There he is. That's what we come here for. Beautiful superlative mangrove jack. Fierce set of teeth. They sit on snags, wait for the prey to come past, and quickly go out, grab them and dive back into the snags. Now it's very shallow along here, it's low tide, it's only about a metre deep. What Kerry was using was a Laser Pro with a shallow running bib. Runs at about a metre or less. Beautiful gold colour, is superb for the mangrove jack. A deeper diving lure wouldn't work here. You'd be grubbing on the bottom or hooking up in the snags all the time. So the shallow runner was successful on the beautiful jacks. And I'll tell you what, this one's for the table. I thought I'd take a bit of a break from the fishing. What a spot for a break. We're in Surveyors Creek, which runs off the Mitchell River. It's noted for its mangrove jacks and some barra. Getting onto the lures, one of the best lures for a mangrove jack are the tremblers. This is the smallest size trembler. Terrific for small to mid-sized fish. The next size up is the 110 gram trembler, probably the most versatile of all. It can account for barra, jacks and even larger species. Of course, above that are the giant tremblers, two 20 gram models, which are not really appropriate for the creek type fishing. The tremblers are a great lure to be jigged from a stationary position. Most fish find the noise emanating from them absolutely irresistible and they have to come up and nail them. For dirty water, I prefer to the fluoro colours. They stand out more compared to the traditional blues and greens. Without doubt, the standout lure of the trip is the 125 Scorpion with the polycarbonate bulletproof bibs. These are patented by Helco and, in my view, it's probably the best innovation in lure technology in over a decade. The bibs aren't sold separately, but the benefit is that you can interchange the bibs from one lure to the other. For example, when the tide's low, you want a shallow runner, a one metre bib. When the tide increases, becomes deeper, you'll need to then move to a deeper running lure. You can even see this particular bib here has got three metres written on it. This one here is four metres. Of course, they go down to one metre. The system works by simply pulling out the locking pin and then pulling the bib out. I can simply then Insert the deeper four metre bib, put the locking pin in and push it home to lock it in place. The benefit of the polycarbonate bib is that it, and the locking system is that no glue is needed. In fact glue can weaken polycarbonate bibs leading to breakages. Well not one drop of glue is on that. It's so versatile, it's a fantastic system. And what's more, the lure has a great action and has accounted for the most barra of this trip. It really is fantastic. Oh yeah, it's a barra, I think. How does it carry? You reckon it's a barra or not? I think it is. Oh, the way he's gone. Yeah, hey, get it well. Oh yeah. No. Is it a barra? No. I'm not sure, mate. I don't think it is. Oh no. Yeah, it yes, is. it is yeah, a barra. Yeah, it is a barra. Oh, nice. Before. Well done. Well done. Yep. Well, when are you going netting, mate? That's good. Oh, very, oh, very God. courteous fish. It just shows the importance of running depths in lures. Carry me fishing partner was using a three metre bib model, but as the tides dropped, it's around about low tide now, he swapped over to a one metre model. See how it's smaller? First cast, bang, barra. Fantastic. So it just shows the importance of the interchangeable bibs, running depths, and uh, the responses from the various fish. Hey, going back in, eh? Okay. Which way? 
The most critical thing in lure fishing for barramundi and other tropical species is you must have a great action on a lure. Colour is secondary. However, having said that, the boys at Helco simply don't dream up colours. A lot of research goes into it. I've fished with them a large number of times around the top on barra and other species. A lot of thought does go into it. Also, a lot of fishermen give their input back to Helco about what good colours uh, can be adopted. This is a fluoro green yellow, highly effective on barra, especially in dirty water. I also like to crush down the barbs on the trebles. There's two reasons for that. The first is the fish's welfare. It makes it easier for them to be released. It doesn't damage them as much. Secondly, the angler's welfare. Up here it's very, very remote. If you end up with a treble in your face or arm, it can be difficult to extract. With the barbs crushed in, simple process, easy as anything. That's why we like to crush down the barbs. I've been using the Platypus Premium brand monofilament, as well as the 30 pound braid and Harrow's Bionic braid 30 pound class. Without doubt, the standout has been both of the braids. You may be able to pick up there how it's slightly furry along the braid. The reason for that is that that particular line has travelled through so many snags with barrow attached to the other end, I've lost count of it. In this particular spot where we've been fishing, the mangroves are unusual. There's lateral limbs laying along the water and underneath the water, and the barramundi have been lying in there. That's necessitating having to cast in tight to cover, hooking up the barra, and they only know one spot to go. That's back into the snags and through the snags and out the other side. I have not lost one fish yet by being busted off on the braid. It's just been absolutely incredible. It obviously, uh, there's no barnacles on the limbs. If there was barnacles, fair enough, yeah, the braid would have some difficulty, like any other line would. But where there's no barnacles, it's just been unbelievable. I've been able to go in there and retrieve line, pull it through sticks, through timber, everything, and come up with the barramundi. I'm absolutely converted. I'm wrapped in this line. I'll be using it for all time now. Don McPherson, or better known as Mr Platypus, has really got the formula right on making this braid. There's virtually no stretch or very, very minimal stretch compared to monofilament lines, which may stretch as much as 30%. This stretches from 0 to 3%, I'm told. But uh, the benefit has been when the fish go into the snags, you can just lock both thumbs down on the reel and beast them out. It gives you a great safeguard. The line doesn't stretch, there's no rubber band effect of the barra continuing to go into the snags. You can actually turn the fish. You can actually talk to them by using this line. I'm wrapped. I suppose just after the wet season you'd have to be on the lookout for changing sandbars. Yeah, this time of the year it, uh, what you see last year is all different again, so uh, we're back to square one in a lot of places, yeah. uh, especially with the big wets like this year. Right, this wheelhouse here with all your electronic equipment looks pretty sophisticated. What, what, perhaps you could just explain what you're relying upon. Well we've got uh, two GPSs, um, we've got a, a one main radar, uh, the radar is pretty useful up there because the GPS is not that accurate because we haven't got deep GPS or anything like that. So, um, and also we've got uh, forward facing um, sonars so we're, we're able to look in front a little bit but uh, up to a point anyway because there's no chance uh, with the brown water and stuff up here actually looking at the bottom. No matter where you travel in the Kimberley, you're never far away from some picturesque and magnificent scenery. And because of the rugged nature of the area, it offers a diverse range of fishing locations. From the mangrove areas to the rocky outcrop and the shoreline, the open sea. These locations, along with the variety of fish, offers the enthusiast and the holiday maker a great fishing adventure.
As you can see from the background, this is really rugged country. We're fishing for giant trevally in around two to three metres of water. I like to use the platypus 20 pound braid. It's got virtually no stretch at all. This is knock them down, drag them out type fishing. You have to put your thumbs down and drag them out. And that's the benefit of the platypus. Hardly any stretch. You've got a chance of winning against the fish before you reef shoot. Are you winning? Yeah. Yep, I'm winning too. Keep going in reverse, Glenn. Get us out of here. What's that lure on your foot there too? Oh, geez, look at him go. You go back on the curry? Yeah. Bit of macrame. Geez, I'm white, isn't it? Oh. That's it, Glenn. Keep back on his head, mate. Wipe those rocks. Beautiful. Just nice and steady. How you going, Kerry? Yeah, you I still got him, mate. I'm winning. Oh, I can see you double. Oh, yep, they're GTs, all right. Yep, big GTs. Oh. These fish are so tough. Oh, this colour down there. Oh, off he goes again. Giant Trevally, also known as GTs, also known as Volkswagens. <laughs> they are pound for pound one of the toughest in the ocean. Dirty fighters. D up on the bottom. Uh oh. oh. Aim across, Kerry. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> I'll go on you. <laughs> oh. Here he comes. Here he comes. Tore him out. Uh, Glenn. <laughs> Kerry's ready, mate. I'm going to just haul him aboard. Glenn without the net, do you reckon? Yep. Let's see if I can get yep. together in the water. Great, that's good. Yeah, the same size, eh? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're a good putt anyway. One of those guys just snapped off the last one. Oh, yeah, he's a bit, a bit, a bit. Beautiful. Lovely fish. Double up, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Kerry, Kerry's lost two lures so far, but third time lucky, nailed him. And a double to boot. <laughs> <laughs> what we got on there is the three metre 125 scorpion. Three metres because we wanted a bit of extra depth in the creeks. We're only using one metre because it was so much shallower. Here it's much deeper, so three metres is getting down to where the fish are in the strike zone. That's the beauty about these lures, you can just change the bibs, dial in whatever depth you want. Fantastic innovation. Speed wobble up, has he? Looks like it's on. Go back on that. Oh man, look at that. Feels like another big GT. The big one, alright. Oh, this is a double. Oh, oh man. Let's crank right up that drag, too. Beautiful platypus 10 kilo pre test. Reliable as anything. <sighs> Look, this is on a 190 Laser Pro. I don't think colour is very important out here for GTs, they're not all that fussy. They'll eat just about anything, any colour thrown at them. <laughs> oh, man, are these tough. Catch a few of these and you'll, you'll like to catch another species. Get a bit tired of them. Get sore backs. Never say die attitude. I can't see any mates with him, oh, Kerry. Well, I haven't seen him yet. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh. 
this is not a line singing. She's on maximum revs there. Oh, there's there a mate now, look, there, yeah. look, 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 big one down there with it. 50 pound uh, Harrow's braid on it. Okay, Glenn. Hold him aboard and I'll get a photo of you, mate. Oh, man. What a fish. Beautiful. Look. He's just there. He doesn't even know it's hooked. Oh, he's pulled out. <laughs> he's swimming with the other one. He didn't know it was hooked. He's hooked in the, look where he's hooked though. Yeah, right. He's back. <laughs> oh, mate. Well, that was good. Oh, he's pulled out. Yeah, you can take him out, bloke. Push, push him out a little bit. Okay. Hey, <laughs> smile on each other. Hey. This is a 110 gram trembler used for jigging amongst the snags, normally associated with barra. But I also find they're very, very effective on pelagic fish such as the giant trevally. You've got to go a bit easy on them though. These trebles are meant for barra, giant trevally can easily straighten them. I backed off the drag a little bit, just held in in time. Got a beautiful trevor. Great lure, great fish. At the end of the day, nothing could challenge Helco lures and platypus lines. They came out winners in all areas, under all conditions. So with them in your tackle box, it doesn't matter what level of experience you have, you can take the satisfaction of knowing you could always rely on Helco and platypus. After fishing the rivers, estuaries and the open sea, it was time to tie down the rods and head for some other remote location for another adventure. Because up here, you can't help being caught up in the lure of the Kimberley. Welcome to the stressful world of lure testing. We're here in the world-renowned Halco test facility off Fremantle and it looks like another tough day in the office. You know, the world of lures has changed a lot over the years. These days it's all high-tech, colour, pattern, 
action, retrieve speed, very important stuff. And we've got Ben Patrick who makes these lures, going to tell us all about it. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in the water and on the water, um, both fishing and under the water, looking at what bait fish do and what predators do when they are attacking bait fish, and that uh, helps our lures have the edge on certain occasions, or most occasions. If we're looking for a lure to crash dive, we'll actually be looking at its rate of descent over a given distance and uh, compare it against other crash diving lures that we have in our range of different sizes, so it's a, uh, very much a comparison thing. Yeah, there's much theory about colours and we try and prove up the theories ourselves rather than just rely on hearsay and um, some of the underwater footage you'll see, it's incredible how, how bold the reds are of the, the, the gills of the lures and uh, it's one of the reasons we find that we think it's so important. If you see bait fish underwater when they get frightened and turn away, their gills flare as they put more water through them and uh, you can always see a big bright red of, uh, flash of red and that's what we try and do with our lures, imitate a, a frightened bait fish. We listen to um, all anglers, but particularly a, a group of key anglers that we work closely with and uh, we listen to what they say and we try and make changes accordingly to make lures to what, what the anglers around Australia and around the world for that matter want. going to look at here is the baby of the range. The little Scorpion 35, we like to call it the Sneaky. In fact overseas they call it the Sorcerer Sneaky. Fantastic little lure. And what it does that's unique is when you stop winding in mid-water it'll actually rise up very very slowly. Very important for hanging around the areas where fish are. If they're down a metre or so you can have it right there and keep it in the strike zone for longer little twitchy retrieve in close to cover and Bob's your uncle. The smallest of the laser pros, the little 45. Fantastic little lure, especially for shallow water ambush species that live near the bottom. I'll show you why it's so good. This little lure is a slow sinker and when you retrieve it, it comes back very much at the same depth. So what you can do is let it sink to just above the bottom, above the weeds, above the little snaggy bits that are going to spoil your fishing, and you can bring it back close to the predators. I'll show you how it works. Slow sinking, okay. You can even use this lure to drop down right alongside jetty piles. A lot of fish like to hang around the piles and feed off the, the weed and little crustaceans. You've got the lure right there in their territory, let it sink right down alongside and then start to work it away. The same thing applies in fresh water uh, and the lure will sink just a little bit quicker in fresh water as opposed to salt and really good for working drop-offs along timber where you could actually run the lure right close to timber and then retrieve it maybe along, along the length of a fallen log, that sort of situation. Makes it a very effective freshwater lure. Talk about versatile, little twisty lure. This, these are the most versatile lures of the lot. Uh, available in sizes from one and a half gram to 70 gram. And you can do anything with these things. They, from the moment you, they hit the water after you cast them, they start fluttering down, they get, they get taken by a lot of predators on the drop. You can fish them from them any depth because they sink quickly, obviously. And one, one of the best ways to work them is to bring them back fast, rod tip high, so it's splashing across the top. Just looks like a little bait fish trying to flee a predator. And uh, a lot of the quicker predators, things like tuna, just can't resist them. This one's in 24 karat gold plate, also available in chrome, and uh, both finishes work great. The rattle of the tremblers, fantastic lures. Really versatile, make a lot of noise as you can hear, quite weighty so you can cast them a long way. And gee, there's a lot of ways you can use these. Now, they come in a range of sizes. You can, you can just cast them out and retrieve them fast and they'll come back in with a very fast vibrating action. You can let them sink down deep and then you can rip into them with the rods and you'll get that really strong rattling noise as you rip it up through the water. Really turns on fish, they're quite exciting things to use fantastic in fast water when you want to get down there a bit, you know, in the current and fish can pick up on this very quickly in that tumultuous environment. I'll show you how we use them. Let it sink down and start to work it back up. And underwater there it'll be making quite a lot of noise. 
hopefully attracting a nasty predator. Of course, you can always just cast it and then just retrieve it, and it comes in with a really nice, fast vibration. Pretty good for uh, some of the smaller tuners. Okay, we're moving on to the big little lures. The Scorpion 68. Once again, the running depth's on the bib. Goes down to two and a half metres, and it's got that characteristic butter knife tail that gives the lure a tight shimmy and exposes that rear hook for a better hookup rate. Have a go at this little one. And that gill, have a look at that, have a look at that gill again, that's, that's fantastic because you can really see that red and uh, that, that's got to attract predators. Cute little critter, little Mickey Mouse ears. Actually, it's luminous, shine a light on these and use them at night, and they glow. Fun to use, it's called the Night Walker. And it's designed for fishing in calm water at night. You throw it out, retrieve it slowly, and it's got a real scuttle across the top. Imitates uh, like a little mouse or water rat swimming across the top of the water. And, and there's, there's quite a lot of big predators all over the world that love coming up and eating that sort of thing. It's got some salt water applications too, but generally the water needs to be calm. It's a real sort of surface scuttling lure and great fun to use because you can imagine on a calm, still night, one of these things scuttling quietly across the top and a big whoop from below. Great fun to fish with. Well, in the mid-sized lures, there's not much better than the Scorpion 125. This is the 4 metre plus model. Like, like all the Halco range, fitted with fish rings, extra strong, mustard trebles. This is a fantastic lure, it was originally designed for barramundi. It's got heaps of other applications like spinning off high rocks, it holds the water beautifully and you can fish it in close. One of the fantastic things about this particular lure is its ability to back off a snag. I'll try and show you how we do this, but what happens is when the lure is swimming along, along and it bumps into a snag, if you drop the rod tip, give it a bit of slack, the lure will back out of the snag. Sounds unbelievable, but we're going to show you that it's true. Okay. So, I'm retrieving this in fairly snaggy country. I'm hoping to get snagged up. Yep, there we go. I'll just drop that rod tip. Give it a bit of slack, give the lure time to work out. You should be free. Yep. of lures we call the crash divers. Exciting stuff. Poltergeist 80, little Tilson Bass. And both these are designed to really get down fast. As soon as you start to crank the rod, it's when it hits the water, down the lures go. So it's great. So you can cast up against a rock wall or right hard up against a snag, a drop off, and the lure will go straight down to where the action is. Crash divers. See how we go with these. Cast out, hard up against the obstacle. Start to wind and give the rod a bit of a whoop. And that lure goes straight down on a crash dive. Down there where the fish are, and you're into the action. Okay. Cast out to the snag or the rock wall. Turn the handle and start working. And straight away that lure is going down really hard towards the bottom and you're going to get right down to where those fish that are hanging deep 
They're just waiting for an easy feed. Same story with the Tilson bass. Throw it out to the snag, a couple of rips on the rod, get the handle winding, and that lure is going to work its way crash diving straight down near the bottom of the snag. And that's often where the really good fish are. shouldn't really shouldn't show you this because and I don't like showing it to the fish because it is so effective it's unbelievable this is the crazy deep it's a scorpion 150 with this remarkable bib on the front that Halco rate this as going down eight meters I've actually snagged up in nine meters of water with this thing and it, it's just incredible that such a small bib can get it down that far it's particularly good in medium depth reefy country say sort of 10 to 15 meter depths where this lure is going to be trolled when you're trolling it at four four and a half knots it's going to be down there right right near the fish's homes you know for species like coral trout that sort of thing uh, you just can't beat them fantastic wonderful trolling lure that will catch fish in situations that no other lures will uh, don't leave home without it There are people that reckon that this is the best big bib trolling lure in the world. I'm not going to argue with them. This is the Laser Pro 190 Deep Runner. Fantastic lure. Heavy duty hardware. Takes a range of speeds right up to about 10 knots, but trolls really well at six, six and a half knots. A little bit of a rattle, tuna love. It just does everything well and it'll take some of the worst punishment that the nastiest fish in the ocean can dish out and keep coming back for more. Really good general purpose trolling lure for big fish. Have a look at that contrast, that red head really stands out. Here she is, the big mama of the Halco lure range, the giant trembler. Big, bibulous minnow, indestructible, strong rattle. It's the bane of every big pelagic in the world. You can troll these things at oh, great range of speeds, right up to about 15 knots. Uh, they're good, they don't catch a lot of weed when you're trolling through the water because they haven't got that bib. Uh, they just do everything right you know, when you want a really heavy duty lure. Tuna in particular just love these things. Uh, gee, you know, when you want a lure that's just not going to fold under pressure, this is the one. Okay, well, now we're going to look at a, a couple of lures that do the same thing, but at different depths. Before we do, just a, a moment on bibs. You can pretty much tell at a glance how deep a lure is going to swim by just having a look at its bib. On these little laser pros, little short bib, shallow runner. Slightly longer bib goes a bit deeper and in fact with the, with the laser pros the, the depth they'll swim to is actually written on the bib. And then you get something like this Tilson Barra. Big shallow bib deep runner. Now what we're going to do is just compare what happens when you really work a lure hard. We'll do it with the Tilson Barra and one of the laser pro 120s. Okay let's, let's start with this Tilson Barra big bib it's going to get down there quickly and with this type of lure the idea is you get it down there and you work it pretty hard and this, it's going to repay you with a lot of action down deep really stirs up aggressive fish and with the laser pro 120 same sort of vigorous action, but this time at a shallower depth.
Alco catch scent. What a great product. It masks all those nasty scents that put fish off biting, things like uh, sunscreen, petroleum products, cigarettes, whatever. It also contains attractant pheromones which will actually bring fish to your bait or to your lure. And those of you that must use bait, if you put this on while you're out in deep blue water, you know, mutton birds can be such a pain, they'll steal your bait sometimes to the point where you just can't keep bait in the water long enough to catch a fish. Squirt some of this on there, brilliant green dye it contains, puts the mutton birds off long enough for your bait to get out of their range, then you start catching fish. But we're going to put it on a lure today. continually testing, assessing and improving our lures, whether it be colours or adjusting bibs or making new bibs, so it's, uh, it's essential we keep up with current trends and also uh, keep improving our lures. Mm -hmm.